94.5 in Chetwin and 104.1 in Dawson Creek. We're on Radio Player in Canada, um, the app. And uh, this is Peace Femin. We're in studio with Connor Pohl from Violet Night, one of our local, very well-known musicians. Uh, welcome uh, back. You've been in Toronto for a while. How long mm. have you been here? I've been here for like two and a half weeks now-ish. Yeah, yeah been back for two and a half now, weeks or so. I know you're back for a performance, but is that mainly why you're back or you're just kind of visiting as well? It kind of worked out well. Like the school hired me to come out and speak and uh, also to perform. Oh, okay. And uh, they had a mental health kind of summit at CSS and they were like, you know, they know that I'm pretty about that because I'm like, I'm going to school for psychology as well. And so um, they kind of had me come out, speak, talk about like, you know, I don't, I, I abstain from using drugs, alcohol, that kind of stuff, which I think they like they kind of coupled that together in a way that's like um i've had a pretty crazy last year and so they kind of that plus being from the smaller community um kind of lends itself to i think giving um in there i mean yeah i don't know it's like i don't want to I, I hate coming across as like conceited but in their eyes it's like a positive influence on the community yeah no of course so, i yeah. mean you're out and about out of school and you're in the you know uh, real world as we want to call it that you yeah know what i mean and you're genuinely carrying on uh, wanting to do good things with your life and doing it without any negative uh, things in your life. Which yeah. I think, you know, at that stage in our lives, sometimes there's a lot going on and especially even more when you're at school. So it's good to know that, to show mm -hmm. them that, you know, without being conceited that it's possible to do it. Right. Yeah. And I think, well, I think that there's like, um, there is a stereotype, like, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll is like an old stereotype. And I think it's less and less relevant as time goes on. But yeah, it's just something where it, you know, to me, I think uh, growing up here, a lot of people would have just counted me out, not counted me out, but I think it's harder to have that, I don't know, like people believe in you. And like it takes it's it's funny because it's it's a lot harder to convince people. But once you do, it's like, OK, well, they finally get it. But so, yeah, they 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 were really kind um, to have us come perform. We had like a cool light show and then we did the same thing at the rec center in the evening. And I because I figured like if we're going to come back and play, it's like, you know, 4,200 kilometers or whatever to Toronto, we might as well make the most of it and do like, you know, two shows. I might as well spend some time visiting my family and just kind of decompressing a little bit from Toronto. Cause like I do quite enjoy it there, but it's also like extreme, it's, it's busy. So like the first things that really hit me when I got back was just like, uh, just walking around, it's like, it is so quiet here. Like just so chill, like very quiet vibes. But yeah, so we've got a handful of shows and uh, the new record coming out and all that other kind of stuff. So, but yeah, it's cool. good, good to be visiting for sure. Good. That's exciting. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, why don't you tell us about your performance? You had it here, uh, I guess, what, two weeks ago? Uh, would have been, it was really good. We had a great, uh, like a lot of people showed up. Um, it was uh it was different like for for me it it was it was uh there's just a lot of instances that were um i guess surprising you know like uh the set went great um i actually like i think i really screwed up this ear though like for the first three days after the set like we were wear in-ear monitors when we play live mm -hmm. but like everything i did like light tapping was really loud in this ear oh. um but only lasted a couple of days thank god so it's like yeah oh, that's good. back to normal now and i'm at a baseline but no it was it, the weird that wasn't like the big the big thing was just i think i didn't really realize till like after the set when we did the like the meet and greet signing whatever thing just like um the perception of people of me is vastly different of my own perception of self i think uh, is that why you said it was surprising yeah just because it was like there's just a lot of instances that um, I don't know. It's it's, it's yeah. It's, it's it's hard to get used to in a way, I guess. But um, that you know, it happens. I I would say it it happens. It's depending like where we play. Like uh, even when we were on tour as early as 2018, we had that kind of an impact, like in Kansas City and in Dallas. So, I mean, so oh, it's really cool. we'd really love to get back to that kind of thing. But yeah, it's it's always a. Uh, um, surprising to me it it because it never changes my own self-perception i'm very much i think will always be very grounded but it it's just it's cool that the music and uh is so impactful to other human beings that they have this uh you know obviously a, a relationship in their head between me and the music and be, because of that i there, there's a significant impact like to me it's it's like that's the obvious goal so it's um to have some sort of positive impact that's bigger than just your own self kind of thing. Yeah, to you, you're just back home, you know, you're here to mm. come back to what you know, and then you get, uh, I guess, 
received very well, but in a different way that maybe you're just not used to. So that's understandable. Yeah, like I've been, I've been stopped so many times for selfies, which is very, <laughs> that, that's new. Like, <laughs> like people will like pedal bike by me, like, you know, I mean, I'll say kids, but I mean like 17, 18, whatever. Yeah. And like, they'll give me the hard stare and then I'll be like, <laughs> I, I'm like, do I know this person? Like in my head, it was like the wheels start spinning. Do I know you? Do I know you? And then, and then they'll like, they'll, you know, the person like in numerous instances, like it'll like clue in. And usually they, they either will know my name or they'll just be like, Hey, Violet Knight. Like as though that's my name. And I'm like, yeah, Violet Knight. Like <laughs> super, like one was at the gas station when I was pumping gas. You know what I mean? It's oh, just cool. very, it's very hit and miss, but it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it always kind of, it's funny because like they'll be staring at me and I'll be like, is there something on my face? You know what I mean? Like in my head, I'm like, it's kind of sub self-conscious, but I'm You're not yeah. thinking the obvious, but they're yeah. obviously thinking, yeah. you know, who you who you represent uh, yeah. for your music. And uh, when was the last time you performed in Chetwin? Um it would have been September twenty fourth, two thousand and eighteen. Wow, you even got it down to the date. I think. <laughs> Yeah, that's the last time. 2018. Uh-huh. That we was were, when you guys were releasing that album. Too, yeah, we had just, we, we finished a rap. We did a really, yeah, we, Colors of You is the, our first record. Um, We finished like a U.S. run. And then I was like, well, let's do a homecoming kind of show. And the, the best part about that is, is at that point, I think we probably had like, I don't know. We didn't have a lot of people show up. Like it was decent. Sure. And it was, mm -hmm. it was I think we had played a great set. I, I'm really happy with how everything went. But like this time, I would say there was like four or five times as many people that came to see us like it was it was significant um so that was obviously a positive as well just uh seeing the growth and being like oh wow and the thing is is that last time like i think we did it for free like it was just like a free show or like it was like 15 bucks or something and this yep. time tickets were, were more expensive too but i was like you know to justify everything you have to charge to rentals and everything right so yeah of course. you know you got overhead but um yeah, I was really, really surprised in a positive way that uh, so many people showed up and really thankful, to be honest. Like, it's crazy how uh, cool to me how supportive everybody is and how people actually listen. And it, to me, it's like it's it's pretty significant to like write a room like you've got these songs you wrote yourself, obviously, mm -hmm. and you have. You know, you're not playing covers, you know, what I mean, like you're you can fill a room with stuff you've written and people know it. That's like that's pretty cool. That's the dream. Yeah. Right. Singing your stuff, your songs that you've sat late nights just writing, mm -hmm. ripping up stuff, maybe it doesn't work, and then it works, and then you have people singing it. I mean, that mm -hmm. must be such a cool feeling. Yeah, yeah. The most, like, obviously the most surreal of which was the, the Top 40 song we had last year. That was, like, the... And then we did have another, like, Head Trip made Top 60, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Ocean. But the goal is, like, Top 10 with this next record and, and stuff. But, um, you know, like, always, I feel like it's, like, summoning Everest, like... No matter how high you get, it's just in like another base camp and you're always looking north. You know what I mean? For oh, me. To like, stay inspired and stay, yeah. I guess, uh, focused mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, focused on the past, which is not bad. But mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, you want to grow as an artist mm -hmm. uh, and in your career. So that's great. Uh, and speaking of performances, I think you were saying earlier on here <clears throat> before we started that you're performing in Grand Prairie. Can you tell us a bit about your performance schedule maybe this summer as things are wrapping up? So this summer we've got festivals kind of around Canada and the U.S. is I think what we're looking at. Um, and our like after this uh, Grand Prairie show, we're playing yeah, Better Than Fred's. That will... I would be pretty confident saying it'll sell out just because typically that that Better Than Fred's does for us, which is great. Um, we're playing with a, a band that's friends of ours called the North Bloods. They're really good, great as well. Um, kind of like a heavier Mumford and Sons, I would say. I mean that in the most complimentary way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're great. Um, yeah, and then we're playing at the Axis uh, for Canadian Music Week in Toronto, which is oh, wow. really cool. It used to be called the Mod Club. Um, and that'll be a really uh, significant for us, I think, as well. We're playing with uh, Bad Flower, which is they're, they're pretty, uh, they're a big rock band, like on American radio and stuff, uh, whatever. So um, we're playing with them and that will also likely be a sold out show. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's kind of just with those kinds of things, it's about stepping up to the plate. You know what I mean? Like you've got a chance, uh, so you better swing for the fences. And I think we definitely will. Can people find this schedule somewhere online? Just for anyone. That yeah, wants just like to our Instagram is usually good, or just our website, like violetnightmusic.com slash tour. Um, okay. or any literally anything like the the go to is uh violetnightmusic.com or just violetnight on Instagram. 
Um, and that's violet as in purple, not as violent as in angry. And I always stress that because you get that confusion a lot. Oh, like you would not believe. And then that movie came out with David Harbour called Violent Night, and it was like, oh, no. I actually so funny story. I received an email from like this disgruntled mom who was mad, and she she emailed us from violentnightmusic.com from our email submission form okay. and so like it's there's kind of a general inbox and i was like oh nobody's read this and i so i checked it and i was like that movie why did santa have a gun why was he killing everyone that movie was horrible and i'm like like i i, I, email, I emailed her back and i was like i think you've got the wrong guy lol <laughs> like what am i supposed to say you know like <laughs> I mean, that and I mean, so it only furthered the confusion and the fact that I got the email is so good. I feel like if you could maybe spin it in a positive way, mm -hmm. like uh, just it could kind of maybe work in your um, in your own advantage. You know how sometimes like you end up getting the spin off publicity of something that you didn't mean to and then all of a sudden mm. it ends up being a good thing. But of course, only if it's positive. Yeah. And, I guess this whole violent uh, Santa thing isn't the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I could Maybe wear a Santa suit on stage and we could just be like, yeah, we just play we just play the soundtrack from that movie. <laughs> just totally sick. There you yeah. go. But uh, that is crazy. Um, now, your time in Toronto, how has it been? It's been great. So yeah, like I like I said, a lot of my time I'm I'm studying like with the goal to become a psychologist um, if I don't do music full time. Music has always been prominent just because it's like, I don't know, my, my life view and my worldview is kind of like you kind of get a certain amount of time and I think it's a really precious resource and I think it's something you shouldn't squander or waste and I think uh, anybody can do anything. I think it's really just a matter of people not, like a, a lot of times people just don't put in the work and it's like if you want something, if somebody else has something, you can get it. I mean, even if you're not like, let's say you're not good at singing naturally, you're not really that good at music. Well, you can go to like lessons. You can learn how to sing like opera, whatever. I don't think, I, I, I don't know. I've always been a believer that the only limitations in life are the ones you set in front of yourself. And any, if you create a limit in here, it's like if you, uh, let's say you're gonna, I don't know, what's a good example? Like you're gonna break the record for high jump. You're not running at that high jump thinking, totally going to screw this up, totally going to eat it. You're thinking, <laughs> I'm going to own this. And it, I think that the psychology there is like, I, I believe that my confidence and belief in myself has led to me making choices I otherwise would have not made and bet on myself. So like that it all has this strange trickle down effect where it's like if you consciously are betting against yourself you're going to make decisions that will set you up to fail and yeah. I, so i just don't and I, it's not meant to come across as narcissistic and by any stretch but more so that if you don't believe in yourself how can you expect anybody else to that's right right you know and even if you don't just fake it until you start to <laughs> at least that's what they say it's a life lesson yeah <laughs> uh but other than that um recording wise so uh, i know you guys are you said you were releasing an album on friday mm -hmm. um Last time you were here with an interview with Michael Ford, you were saying how you guys haven't signed on to a label, you're still independent. So how's that process all going with this new album and how did you uh, guys navigate that? Um, yeah, so we've had like different <laughs> offers, obviously, um, at this point, which is always humbling and very cool, um, especially, you know, just... It, it's it's wrapping your head around like a band from Chetwind is getting like lab record labels wanting to sign. It's, just, it's a very interesting thing to consider, I think. Um, but for us, um, as far as that goes, it's kind of like it's way smarter for us at this point to stay independent in my head because we, um, you know, we have different agencies that are interested in us, um, which is excellent. There's a few. Um, so, like, you know, we've got a great manager. We've got a great team, like great, you know, photo, video, whatever, everything. And I'm really good friends with everybody on the team. The only difference is, is like, so if a label comes in, a label would like appoint all of these things to you. Like we have a great product and distribution guy. We have a guy working at radio that's affiliated with Universal Music. So it's like we kind of have the best of those worlds, but we don't have um, a label, which is like it, it serves a purpose, but then it also can be limiting in the way that like they have so much control if you know if you're not making enough money they can shelve you and it's like i've worked my whole life for this i'm not trying to do that not there is certain instances and in labels that i am interested in i will say mm -hmm. and certain deals if they were right that i would really consider for sure um some of my friends that i've spoke with who are in the industry in the states like from la and stuff 
they have deals that with labels that I think are fair and that make sense. But at this point, you know, if you're going to sign over your master rights and all these other things that artists have, you you really stand to lose a lot, especially for us at this point in the game when we because it's kind of like building your own independent business. Right. Right. And we've built it to a point now where it is lucrative. And I do understand that allure. But at the same time, it's like you kind of what one of my good friends in the industry is like, man, like you're right there. Don't sell the farm like you you built it. You know what I mean? Right. Wait. And if, if yeah, like if we can find a partner with the right deal with a similar vision to me that um, that lines up somebody that I am. I have, I'd have to feel like I was friends with them, too. Right. Like yep. it was a connection. Because there's always that, I don't know, you you can always tell like somebody's intention. It's really hard for people to hide um, behind the guise of kindness or, or genuine interest. Like, I don't know, I'm pretty empathetic. So it's like, I can just like look at somebody and be like, hmm, so we're lying today. You know what I mean? Like, or, but if they're sincere, sincerity is something you can't fake. Like um, everybody on our team that I have come into contact with and become friends with, they're like, they usually have introduced themselves as, hey, I really love your band. Like, this is a fan. And, and then they're like, oh, well, I work in this field. And then things kind of blossom from there. Um, but it, it's never like, hey, I have a business proposal. You know, it's it's very um, organic, I would say. So who do you guys work with in Toronto to uh, record all your music and do all that? Like, I know from what I understand, if you're with a label, you know, they usually have like a studio set up for you and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you guys just work with uh, friends in Toronto and rent a studio or how does that all go for you independently? So uh, this record was actually recorded in Toronto, Vancouver and Edmonton with six different producers. So it's like kind of crazy. It's kind of like a bit of a melting pot sonically. And I love that because it's not boring, you know? Um, we had like we had one of my best friends and he's like a full time studio producer. Um, like he he worked on the Anti Heroes record and the Colors of You record. And he's probably been my longest time collaborator. And his name's Randor Lynn from Edmonton. And he works mm -hmm. with Velveteen Audio. And they're like they're like the premier studio in Edmonton. Like they're quite, quite great. Um, and then this was it was co-produced by a guy from Edmonton named uh, Father Bobby Townsend. Um, and he's really cool as well. Um, and then we had two of the songs that hit a little harder, a little heavier, mm -hmm. kind of like, um, on antiheroes, we had songs like hate me. And if you were the ocean, I would like to drown. So we worked with, we obviously had a nice successful formula with him where just really nice contrasts that were complimentary. And he, uh, he came in for two. And then we worked with uh, just fresh off like a Juno win, Ryan Worsley in Vancouver, who was also totally different world. They're all like these. It's so interesting because production is such a it's so unique to the individual and the process and the studios. And yeah, like all the studio. It's, it's crazy. The studios we worked in have seen like some amazing artists come through the doors and to kind of envelop all three of those rooms into one record, I think is really a cool idea. Okay. Yeah. What's the name of the record? Do we know? Yeah, it's, we know so yet? it's called Daydream Drama. Daydream Drama. Yeah, Daydream Drama. Any backstory to that? Um, well, I had a bunch of different names, uh, as I always tend to. Like, there's just different things that I kind of will hit me. And, like, so our first record is I Hope You're Well, followed by Colors of You, Antiheroes, and Daydream Drama. So for anybody who's watching this, here's an Easter egg. There is a similarity between all of our album titles when you say them. And I'm not going to exactly like say what the similarity is, but if you think about it and you just say each of them to yourself, you'll find that there's a common there's a commonality. But maybe if they get it, they can comment on our video on Chat TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And give them a shout out. Yeah, yeah, for on sure. Social for sure. media. Yeah, yeah. Um so yeah, that that's one of the things. Daydream drama, I think. It was kind of inspired by the lackadaisical approach I feel that many people found themselves stuck in in the middle of the pandemic. You're kind of like, I think there was so much boredom <laughs> that we we observed that um, a lot of people created dramatic situation. Oh, sorry, this phone. Uh, okay. Dramatic situation where there didn't. Um, so I'll just start that again, cause yeah. But yeah, I, I was gonna say so. Like daydream dramas. Like during the pandemic, a lot of people had. Um, yeah, too much time on their hands in a way. Not in a bad way. I don't mean that to be insulting or condescending. Oh, it's okay. But um, we were all in the same boat. Yeah, we all. Yeah. And I think 
it kind of made people like dream up these more dramatic uh, situations of reality that didn't really exist. Things that would be stretched to the like 10 millionth degree simply because we were all just staring soullessly into our phones doom scrolling well a lot so i i took a social media break and i wrote and i you know i'll uninstall all social media apps when i and just kind of lose myself in music and it's like generally speaking the best i feel is when i delete all that stuff and when we get to a certain point i would love if somebody else ran it because i really am not a guy that like I, I know that it serves a purpose of like being connected and stuff, but I really like living in this world that we're in like here together right now, having yeah. real conversations, you know? So, but yeah, so daydream drama. Um, and I had a bunch of different names that one I thought had some significance and my little sister, I actually ran the name by her. I was like, which one of these names is the coolest? And that was the <laughs> name she chose. So, oh, well, there you so go. here we are. Yeah. Got a nice family touch to it too. Then mm -hmm. what about the rest of the band members? Do they, how does that all work with you guys? Like, do they pipe in on some of that stuff or do they just say, Connor, we leave that to you? Um, that's, that's a tough one. <laughs> are, are you guys watching? <laughs> uh, it's, it's usually like they definitely will, will voice their opinions and, and cast their vote and say what they think the coolest is. Our drummer, I would say I'm most collaborative with our drummer, Tay. Um, he's, he's pretty involved that way. And, um, he's a really great bouncing board of ideas. How do I look at this? Like my brain is like a nonstop roller coaster of st just jumbled whatever. And he's like a really grounded, centered person that um, can like field what's good and what's not. He's a good filter. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and he's really good for giving me feedback. Um, so, so like he'll always give me like the wisest, most insightful feedback regardless of situation and he's like usually right even if i don't want to acknowledge that in my head at the time so then if i go against his advice i will be like and he'll be like you'll regret it later well, on. well he, he'll give me like it's like he, he doesn't even have to say i told you so because he just knows that i know that he knows that i know you know <laughs> but um it's a nice little psychology trick he plays on you yeah 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 but he and i have become quite close i would say the last while and uh he feels the most like the band has it was always me and TJ and TJ has been on a bit of a break just for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had like a lot of drummers come and go. And I would say that Tay feels for sure at this point, like the most like in the band drummer, like he's really because he's been with us now since 2019. Um, you know, he co-wrote, if you are the ocean, I would like to drown with me. Like a lot of my favorite Violet Night songs were written in his uh, home studio together. Um, I think we have a really good chemistry and um, we're really good at um, knowing what's good and, and what, like the difference between good and great is really subjective and it's really something that you have to trust your gut on. And I think together we really are able to, to do that, but it's something where independently it can be hard sometimes, you know, like it's really hard as one human being to just to, to write everything and be like, this will work like everyone will, you know what I mean? But having that second set of ears and then after it gets through that process, we will, you know, send it out to producers at a demoing level and be like, how do you guys feel about this? So like for this next, yeah, for the rec, we have a record coming out and I have the record that's following it already written. Like I have like 90 songs written for it. Oh, so. that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. So we're hoping to, I mean, obviously I don't want to get too into that topic because we have a brand new record coming out for everybody, but right. Um, we'd like to get back in the studio soon and then have another record come up probably next year. Will you have, uh, like, I know when you're here before, uh, the last time you were here in our studio, you mentioned how, you know, you were releasing a few singles just because of the way that's the industry and the market is going. It's good to release those as opposed to like a full album right away. Mm -hmm. But here we are now. You had, was it uh, Head Trip and Save Me that have been released in that time period? Mm -hmm. And then um, will those make it to this new album? Um, the one that's coming out Friday will have those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And... I think they're pretty indicative of where it's at. I mean, Head Trip is kind of more of like an alt rock. It sounds like like a heavier Arctic Monkeys meets Royal Blood kind of with some 21 Pilots thrown in there, some trap. Like it's it's a little, you know, it's got quite a bit going on. Mm -hmm. And then Save Me is more like a solid right hook to the jaw in the best way, even though that could never be a positive thing. It hits like a truck. You know, mm -hmm. it's heavy. It's energetic. It's That one is more like a blood relative or sibling to the song Hate Me. That was from, you know, it was also quite popular for us. Um, but they're, they're, those two, like, they're totally opposite ends of the musical spectrum. Well, not really. They're both rock, but they're like, 
one is significantly heavier than the other, right? And one sense. is definitely more alternative leaning. Yeah. Okay. And then when this comes out on Friday, where can people uh, listen to this album? Wherever they listen to music. I mean, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. There is still Antiheroes vinyl available on our web store as well if they want to grab that. There is limited Daydream Drama t-shirts, which I would say if you want one, you should get one because there's like barely any left. We, we printed quite a few and I think I've got... Yeah, I've, like for literally for small, medium, like whatever, I've got like two shirts each and I've got like, I think 10 larges maybe left. And after Grand Prairie, I'm pretty sure most, if not all, will be gone. So better get them now. Yeah, we, we kind of try to be like exclusive with the merch. So we will never, we never do reprints. Um, that way it kind of is like more special and it's, for the person that buys it, you know, it's like, yeah. you're not just going to keep making the same thing. It's, you can't just get it forever. It's, uh, yeah, cool that way. It's got a nice sentiment to it. I like that. Well, that's all I had. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us about uh, either your time here or anything upcoming? No, I mean, I mean, that, I think that really covers it. Like we've got, yeah, we've got shows coming up and I'm thankful that the community has been so supportive um, and just kind to me. And um, I really look forward to like, you know, what's next for Violet Night and, Hopefully, you know, with it sounds like we'll be touring a lot next year as well. Um, hopefully we get to stop in the community again, say hello, and we have more good news to share and, you know, uh, visit with people and everything else. Beautiful. Well, hey, thank you for joining us and thank you for coming to perform for Peace FM and Chat TV. I'm Marlon Gomez, Connor Pohl. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Cheers.